In this video, we're going to solve our first example for using the regular falsi method. Example 4-1. Use the regular falsi method to solve the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0 within an error of 10 to the minus 4th. And you might say we have solved this using the bisection method, except that we looked for an error on the root. And then we solved it using the secant method, exactly like this. And now we're going to solve it using the regular falsi method. So how do we start solving this? We are looking for an error on the function value here, not on the root value. So our goal here is to find an approximate value x such that this expression is less than 10 to the minus 4th as opposed to in the bisection method when we were approximating the square root of 2. Now our numbers all look like the square root of 2, but our goal is different. So what do we need for the regular falsi method? We need a continuous function. Yep, it's a polynomial. And we need a start interval that brackets the root. So what interval should we take as our starter? Okay, we've done this several times, but we'll actually do it in GeoGebra again. Remember, we make a table with GeoGebra, and we find out different function signs. So our root is bracketed by the interval 1, 2. So our A is 1, and our B is 2. Let's go to GeoGebra and solve this problem. So here we are in our standard window for GeoGebra. And let's remember that regular falsi is a combination of the secant method for finding the new point and the bisection method for finding the interval. So we are going to have to put in both of those complicated formulas, the one for the secant method to find the new point and the ones for the bisection method to find the new interval. But we will start by just inputting our function. So come down to the input bar and click. And our function is f of x, little f, equal to x squared minus 2. And our error here is, remember, case sensitive. So 1 point capital E minus 4. And let's have GeoGebra find the root for us. Root, and we're taking the second one down, which uses Newton's method. And f tab over, and we decided we needed to use the right-hand boundary to get the right-hand root, so 2, enter, and so there is our root using Newton's method. And now we're going to use regular falsi to find it. Here we weren't given instructions to only find the positive root, so let's make sure we get the other root. So click, coming back down here to the input bar, let's type root and pick up the other root. So that would be f and, let's say, minus 2. And there's the other root. Okay, so let's go over here and find our bracketed intervals. Now, let's try something new here. Let's say that we have no idea where the roots are. And so we try typing in 10 here for our guess at the beginning. The idea is that because we're using formulas here, we can change this value and then find our bracketed interval over here. So we always say equals the one above it, so j1 plus 1, enter, so it adds 1 to this. And then over here we calculate the function value, so equals f of j1, remember capitals, enter, and then we drag this one down, and then we drag both of these down until we start to see changes in sign. And what do we see here? We see this is just getting bigger and bigger. Now we can go down farther. And we will keep noticing that it's getting bigger. So what do we do? We come back here and we change this, let's say now we're going to get it right, to minus 2. And now we have our bracketed places. We have this changes sign here. So this is one of our bracketed intervals. And this changes sign here. So this is our other bracketed interval. So that's the idea that if you use the formulas here, you can just change that first value and then look for sign changes again. So we're going to start with 1 and 2 because it's positive values. And we can either try minus 2 and minus 1 
or we can assume because the function is symmetric that the value that makes the function close to zero on the one side will make the value of the function close to zero on the other side. So let's go to our spreadsheet now, okay, and come back over here onto our area. So notice we have the secant slope. That's because we use the secant method to find the new point, right? And also notice that we have the absolute value of the function as our error measurement here, just like, so we start like normally, one, and then equal to a2 plus one, and then drag this down. Hopefully we won't need that many. And then our bracketed interval was one and two. These are just function values, that's easy, equals f of uh, b2 equals f of c, c2. Now the secant slope, remember, it comes from the secant method. So we're looking to find the secant slope, which is the change in the y values of our two points over the change in the x value of our two points. And then we calculate xn as follows. So let's pull that formula in and write up our formulas. So here we have equals, we need the change in the f values, so we're gonna need a parenthesis, uh, e2 minus d2, e2 minus d2, go outside, divided by, and then c2 minus b2, capital letters. Now we have equals, and remember we use this point, so that's c2 minus, and then we need f of that point, so that's e2, and then we divide it by the secant slope, f2. Enter. This is just f of that. So what is the address? G2. And this is, is the absolute value, don't forget that, I always forget that, of H2. Go outside, is it less than error? And we can see that it's not, so we should get false. Okay, now, here we need to put these two in, but now we have to use the bisection method. So we need the bisection method way of calculating the new left and new right endpoint. And remember we had the new left is f of the old left and f of the new point, here it's the secant point, if they're the same sign, then we take the new point, otherwise we leave the old point. And the same thing for the right. Let's copy these formulas in and go set up our formulas. So here we are, we need equals and then we need an if, a conditional, so if, and then a bracket, that's important, not a parenthesis, this is a command. So now we wanna compare f of the old point, the old point is n minus two, so we're looking at d2 divided by h2. d2 divided by h2. It's the same letters as in the bisection method. If that's positive, then we wanna change it to be the new point, that would be g2. If not, we want to keep it the old one, so that's B2. And in this case, let's see, we wanted it to change, yes, because it's negative, and so it's the same as this one, so we need it to change. Okay, so here we are, equals, conditional, if, bracket. Now we're comparing the F value of N minus one with the new F values, so E2 divided by H2, if that's the same sign, that makes it positive, then we want the new one, which would be G2. Otherwise, we want the old one, which would be C2. And we'd better get C2 here because we've already changed this one, right? Good job. So we copy this down one level. Remember to mark from inside one level. And then we copy this row down until we get true. That's false. False, false, true. So mark it green. Mark our answer green. And mark our number of iterations green. So it took us six iterations now to get to this. I believe in the second method, it took us four iterations. So it took us two extra iterations with the regula false method. But the regula false method should converge, whereas the secant method might not.
Now remember that when you're looking for a function value to be smaller than your error, you have many answers. That's usually why they ask you for the number of iterations. But let's see how many we can use as a minimum. So we're going to copy this. We could just write down 1.414201011, and that's a good answer. But let's just see how many we need. So 1.414 probably won't do it for us. Nope. Uh, so let's add two more. 2.0, and we get true. So we could even, even just put two there. 1.4142 as our answer. So the answer to the other interval would be minus 1.4142. So in conclusion we had this table. We decided that we could use this number here or 1.4142. So one set of answers is plus or minus 1.4142. The important part here is it took us six iterations with the regular falsy method. It only took us four iterations with the secant method to get exactly the same result. And that is the end of example one with regular falsehood.